Hey everyone, welcome back to the Career Metis Podcast. This is your host, Nisar Ahmed. And this is episode 113 of the Career Metis Podcast. And this episode is part of the Career Expert Series. And in this segment or series in the past, I've brought on career professionals, coaches, who share their ideas for today's job seekers on how they can navigate the job market. And even if someone already has a job, what are some of the things they can do to advance their career? Our expert guest today is Gorette Rees. She's a certified life and career coach and a speaker. She guides success-driven professionals who desire to advance their careers. And some of the things that she helps her clients with are advancing their careers, learning how to gain greater autonomy, how they can increase their pay or compensation, how they can get more clarity, direction, and focus, and also how they can experience more confidence and joy. So Without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest. Hey, Goret, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Nasser. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Now, you are also based in Toronto. Yes, I am. So yeah, and the people who have been listening, they know I'm based in Toronto as well. I've had a few guests from Toronto. And mm-hmm. of course, we talk about the multiculturalism. We talk about mm-hmm. all the things. What is one thing what is one thing that you like over everything else? Now, you cannot say multiculturalism because... Ah, that's too bad. <laughs> Oh, it's, you know what's too bad? You know why? Because one of my top values is diversity. Okay. And so I won't say it, but diversity, I, I wasn't going to use the term multiculturalism, but I was going to use diversity and that's a big one for me, but I won't say it. I'll say something else. Go ahead. So I'll just finish, let you finish the question. <laughs> I just wanted to have a little fun with it because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a default answer. Yeah. Okay. No problem. I, I, I got it though. Can I say food? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would say the diversity of food then, right? Because then, you know, with all the different cultures and all the different, you know, neighborhoods and everything, you just get this different amount of this various, various amount of different ethnic food. And that's my favorite, like one of my favorite things. It definitely is. There's no shortage of choices. There's so many options and get anything. And that's, that's the beauty of Toronto's culinary experience. Oh, totally. Yes, exactly. I think I've exhausted many, many Indian restaurants in Toronto. (laughs) And other, I mean, I'd say my top three are Mediterranean food, Indian, and Italian. Yeah. Well, yeah, mainly. Before we get into any of the career-related questions, I think it'll be helpful for the audience to learn a little bit more about yourself. So you're a career coach, you're a life coach, speaker. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how you got started and how you got to where you are today. How I got started? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so I was super dissatisfied as a teacher. So I was in education for for many, many years. And I knew, you know, something was missing. And I didn't know quite what it was. I just knew that, you know, the teaching was not it. I was very unsatisfied. Not a lot of, and I know you don't like this term, not a lot of work-life balance or integration. I just, it was, I felt really fatigued. I was starting to experience some health problems. And I just all around, yeah, dissatisfied. So not just the health problems. And I knew that something's got to give. And then I decided to not travel because I usually travel and I decided to not travel. I actually was very close to seeing a career and life coach myself. I was super close to signing up. And, and then I just actually, you know, took a day off from everything, from, you know, friends, errands, everything. And I just made space and time for, you know, myself and to kind of reflect and and figure out what I wanted and see if it would work that way through that method. I was just experimenting. And it so happened that I actually found my answer. I I just created enough time and space to get still. And that's what I did. I, and, and all of a sudden that it came out out of nowhere, (laughs) you know, coaching or life coaching. And then I got into career coaching as well. So yeah, that's how I started. And then two days Later, actually, within first, I think, 10 minutes of researching different coach training programs, I was going to sign up and I thought, no, 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 don't be impulsive, right? And then two days later, I researched a lot of different schools 
and different programs. And then I signed up for the one that I was going to sign up in 10 minutes. So that's funny how instinct works. And then I started two weeks later, I signed up for the course and I started it in January of 2015. And so when I had that day, that was like December 27th or 28th of 2014. And since then, I've just, yeah, well, first of all, there was a bit of a transition. I was teaching at the time. So I, yeah, I was uh, teaching and, and then training uh, on the side. So then I'd also a uh, practice coaching on the side as well. So evenings and weekends. And I developed my clientele enough to leave my teaching position seven months later in July of 2015. Well, congratulations. So now Thank you. Three plus years you're doing. Yes. So. That's right. And so I love it. I love it. And I'm so glad that I figured it out. And I'm so glad I gave myself that, you know, that break of routine and just, you know, took time for myself, prioritize that. So that's, to me, that's what I would suggest for people to do. And or see a coach because, again, I was so close of seeing one myself. A uh, question I have is, mm-hmm. do you find any parallels between teaching and coaching? Because do you think you took some skills? Transferable skills, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to be careful because, yes, uh, you know, there's an education component to it. However, I would say, like, it's all about the client, though. So when we're having a session, it's not about me talking about whatever it's about the client that being said if there are moments where i feel it's going to add to the experience or if i share something or or suggest something then i will of course i will right it's not just like them just talking to me it is both ways but it's majority of it's about the client it's about their needs and what they're bringing to the session and then there's some of course you know me again suggesting or sharing so yeah so uh, there's a small portion i would say yeah so there is some some education to that. I would say the other education component would be me speaking though. So I do provide tips in one of my signature talks in terms of having more career and life fulfillment and how to achieve that. So yeah, so that that's, I would say that's, yeah, education there as well. Based on your bio, you do help your clients with variety of challenges they face in their careers. Mm-hmm. I, I think I mentioned four or five of them. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious, when, when clients come to you, what is the most common challenge or the top two challenges that you see across the board? Okay, so this is interesting. The reason why I, call, I started out as a life coach, okay? I started as a life coach. And the reason I evolved into a career coach as well, so both, is because I reflected on what my clients were coming to me with. And the entry point would be a career-related issue. So they'd either want to advance their career some way or better it. So a better advance, uh, well, I could say one could argue that bettering is advancing. Uh, so if they don't want to necessarily go somewhere else or get a promotion, they're still bettering the situation. And then the other one I would say is finding direction. And you'd be surprised if people think, oh, well, you know, millennials, it's just, you know, younger people who, you know, want to find out what they want to do. That's not necessarily true. In fact, it's not true. I mean, I have many clients who are middle-aged or older. And they still don't know what to do, right? They've been doing something else or what their parents wanted or what what they thought society expected of them. And it's not necessarily what they wanted to do. So they're still looking for direction. So I'd say those are the top two why they come to me. But then there's other things that, yeah, like that we, you know, talk about or, you know, examine in our coaching sessions. Yeah. Uh, So when you say directions, are they mostly young professionals, new graduates, or do you also find establish mid-level managers who come to you and saying they're stuck with their careers? Oh, yes. Yeah. So majority of my clientele, I would say majority are, uh, let's say over 40, majority of them. I do work with some people in their thirties and maybe like I have like a, maybe a few in their twenties, but not many. So I would say majority are people who are older. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? Because when you think about someone's career path, everybody assumes that when you mm-hmm early 20s, that's when you struggle to find a direction. What you're finding is, and what, our, what we are learning is that even once someone is over 40, they still face the challenge. And I'm just curious, why do you think that is? Like, do you, don't you think people figured it out early in their careers? Well, uh, yes and no. Some people do. So I want to, you know, like some people know exactly what they want to do. They wanted to be that doctor or that, you know, lawyer, or, you know, or whatever. They wanted, they knew right away or veterinarian. They wanted to do that right away and they knew that. So that's great. But there are a lot of people who struggle. And, and oftentimes it's because, well, I feel, I think the reason is because, you know, again, back to expectations. What did their parents want? You know, 
what did their friends or, or society expect of them? So they are, it's more coming from, okay, in coaching, I use the two terms, essential self and the social self. And the social self is, you know, everything, you know, constructed from what was social. So parents, uh, society, friends, any, you know, circle of influence, right? And essential self is what you want and who you are outside of any of that, right? And oftentimes it's our social self that gets developed more so in life than our essential selves, unfortunately. And that's why I think that, yeah, you could be, you know, 55 or whatever and still not know or thought you wanted to go and do law or, you know, or, or be a doctor and, and say, hey, you know what? This is actually not really what I wanted. This is what my dad wanted or, you know, like, hey, wait a second, you know? Right? So that is interesting because correct. Actually, first of all, that that concept is a very good. And because most people do not know what they're choosing in social self and essential self. And there's a lot of pressure for young professional to get started right away on something. And mm-hmm. most of that sometimes I shouldn't say most of the time, sometimes it is not what they really wanted to do. So that's the reason mm-hmm. all, mm-hmm. I'm assuming they, uh, as they get into the 30s or 40s, they say, oh, I'm not satisfied. I want to do something else. Yep, exactly. Because then they, they're they older now and they're getting a better sense of themselves, right? And what they want, what they don't want. In the beginning, it's just like, oh, who, who can I please? Can I get my dad's approval or whatever, just as an example, right? So yeah, I, I would say that yes, exactly. So as they get older, they're like, hey, wait a second. I actually really don't like this. So now we spent all this time talking about the challenge, the common challenge, the people are mm-hmm. stuck with directions, they come mm-hmm. to you. What do you recommend? Like, what are some of the recommendations you give to them when they are in that position, they talk to you? What do you suggest? Okay, so yeah, like coaching with me it, in itself, it's a, a very, I guess, individualized experience because it's whatever you're bringing to me. So I can't say because that's, hence I have coaching packets that, packages. I do not uh, have programs, but eventually I'll get to the programs at one point. But I would say some generic things to do is what I did. So step away however you can, if it's like an hour or a a day or a week or a month, if you can step away and and just create that time and space with no distractions. That's the one thing. And and for some people, you know, stepping away is, is seeing a coach. So that is a way to gain perspective. So if you can't, or if you're having difficulty just stepping away on your own, you don't have the discipline or you don't, whatever, whatever's happening, see a coach, right? And that, that's a way to, to, yeah, create that space and time for yourself to reflect and to gain perspective. And the second tip I would say is to get clear for sure, right? So, you know, what do you want? What are your values, right? What's your big why? And, and that's very important because that's going to help you, you know, direct yourself like, Follow your inner compass, that essential self we're talking about. And then the other one, once you get clear, right? Once you figure all of those things and figure out your values and, you know, all of that. Because I think a lot of people don't even, even reflect on their values. So they don't even understand like, you know, oh, wait a second, this is not it. So I, I was following or chasing a job that, you know, provides all this, but I actually don't value that, right? <laughs> Whether that's money or whatever, whatever, have, whatever, fill in the blanks. And the last tip I would say is to take action. So once you get clear, once you know, that's the, a lot of internal work, right? And then it, it's imperative to actually follow it up with steps like I did, right? I did the training course. I, I was teaching and training and, you know, providing an exit plan for myself, a transition. So that's, I mean, that's summing, summing up some tips. That's a great framework, right? So if I can just recreate what you just said, uh, mm-hmm. step away. Because a lot of people do not do that, right? Especially, you do this all the time. Like, uh, it, sometimes it is voluntary, sometimes it's involuntary. Sometimes That's right, yep. Laid off, companies are downsized. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have to leave or so there's a change in your career. It's more very important to step away. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and I've done that a few years ago where I took a break and I realized this is what I wanted to do. And I'm really happy with the path I've taken where I've arrived. And mm-hmm. Real, like that's something a lot of people do not do. That's right. Uh, clarity and you give the framework and then of course you mentioned about once you're clear, start taking action. And I think that's a big challenge with a lot of, I mean, action is the cure for a lot of things, right? So maybe, yes, you're dissatisfied. If you do not take action, you're still mm-hmm. dissatisfied. So I wanted to ask you a question to take action. Yes. A lot of people today, where they have not come to the point where they have 
they need to take a break or talk to a coach. They are still there and they are stuck in this, what they call a career stagnation mode where Mm -hmm. actually some people it's many years, not months. And Mm -hmm. what can they do if they are there at that point? What what can they do to to force themselves to get a point, do something? Because a lot of people would rather wait till something disastrous than to take action right now. Well, I would, you know, invite them to ask themselves which pain is greater, staying the same or doing something different, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like looking at their situation and getting real about their situation, right? Taking an inventory of their life or their career in this, uh, in this case, right? And, and taking an inventory and saying, hey, you know, like, like, for instance, like, I'll just give you an example. With teaching, it, it got to that point where it was more painful you know, to stay where I was at. It was just, it just got to that point. And that's why I love that uh, quote by Anais Nin. And it says, and the day came that to remain tight in the bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom, right? And I'd say that's exactly, I would, it would sum up how I was feeling is that, you know, it's stagnation, sure. Yeah, it's stagnation, but how much pain are you in, right? And are you willing to experience more of the same pain in the same, in the same place? I guess that's the question. That's actually a good point because if the pain becomes too much, that's when you take action, right? Yes, that's, usually. I think that's, that comes to the whole self-awareness. If you're aware of yourself, yep. what is happening, then you can make those changes. And that's a good point, Nassar, and because you know, some people, they're not aware. They're just going through the motions of, I'm still waking up or whatever time, six in the morning to get to this job that I cannot stand because da, da, da. But the, it's habit at this point. Their dissatisfaction, that feeling is habit. They're so familiar with the dissatisfaction because they've been doing it for like eight years, right? (laughs) So that's a good point. Sometimes they're not aware. So I think the stepping away is crucial, right? Yeah. Step away. Step away from your family for, you know, an hour or two hours or or a half a day or a day. Like, give yourself some space to reflect. Like, check in with yourself. I want to go to another topic that you briefly mentioned at the beginning, the whole concept of work-life integration. Timely, you mentioned this because this morning I was watching a Tony Robbins video and he talked about the same thing. He's, he didn't believe in balance and he talked about work-life integration. So now we are coming, so we talked about the job seekers looking for a career. Let's say they already have a career. Yep. Yep. They're feeling that stress. There's so much to do. Mm-hmm. You had this in- interesting concept called integration. Yes. Hear about it and also how it is different from work life balance. Right. Okay. So, yeah, no, and it's fairly new. I mean, I didn't come up with the term integration, something that I read or heard. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's great because I feel there's, so we, pretty, most of us know the whole idea of work life balance is to, okay, so work is work, right? And it's supposed to be work. And life is, you know, outside or relationships, you know, and then you want to balance it out with that. However, the ideal, is to find something that you actually love so then it's integrated and so i guess it's important for people to find balance if there is even such a thing i'll i'll look at that in a second i'll examine that in a second but i guess it's important if they can't stand what they do right so they want okay five o'clock done okay i'm checked out or whatever if that's even possible nowadays because a lot of blurred boundaries in the workplace in terms of digital and you know phone communication outside of work hours (laughs) I'm sure most people can identify and relate to. However, so yeah, so I guess if, you know, they're not happy, I guess it's a, it's a balance issue, I I guess. But if you love what you do, then it's an integration. It's just a part of what you do and how you feel fulfilled. And now let's go back to the whole balance thing. I mean, oftentimes that whole term itself, it puts pressure on people because they're like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm not, I don't even have balance. And that's another added thing for them to do because they're like, wait a second, I don't even have, what does that mean? So I guess in some respects, I guess it helps because it categorizes and clarifies to like, okay, wait a second, if I'm not, if I'm spending, you know, 12 hours at work, okay, maybe I don't have. So it gives a person a term if they don't understand the term of integration, I guess it's helpful there. But yeah, it's it's not to have like, because I don't think anything can be completely perfect. If you took a pie chart of your life and oh okay well I'm going to give you know 30 here and you know 30 there and like <laughs> and you know so I don't I don't know if it could be as cookie cutter and perfect as that so if you're looking for and how to quantify it so I guess it's more of a qual- qualitative thing and uh, you kind of just want to work to hey work brings you joy and life brings you joy and everything else so it's it's integrated 
that makes sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that for that to happen, you mentioned something about if you love what you do. Yeah. So I think that's very important. So I think that's why actually that goes back to what we were speaking in my opinion, what you were speaking mm-hmm. a few moments back is if, if you chart out a career path, you find something that you enjoy, mm-hmm. the balance becomes less of an issue. Then you can, if you really enjoy what you do, then something that you're willing to do all the time, then work-life integration makes it, becomes natural. That's right. That's right. I mean, because it's not, you're not doing something that depletes you. You're doing something that replenishes you. And so, yes, it's work, but it actually still replenishes you. It fills your bucket so to speak. Wonderful. So, yeah. Gorette, we, we've had some interesting ideas that you have shared with us. After listening to this, if the audience wanted to reach out to you and learn more, how could they do that? So you can go to my website. My, I, I guess the spelling of my name is not the most common, but it's a www.g-o-r-e-t-t-r-e-i-s.com. So you can get my Facebook page. I have, well, I, I recently got a, a business Facebook page because of circumstance, but you can go to either my personal or my Facebook page and message me there. So, you know, I'm through LinkedIn. LinkedIn's there and uh, you can message me as well through LinkedIn. So Gret again, G-O-R-E-T-T and last name is Reese, R-E-I-S. Awesome. As we are coming towards the end of the interview, any last words, any final pieces of advice that you would like to leave the audience? Yeah, I would say like in whatever, whether you're satisfied, dissatisfied, I, I think it's really a great thing to step away, you know, nonetheless, right? So it's a it's great that, you know, thing to break the routine. And even, even if you're all great with your life and everything's, you know, hunky-dory, I mean, just to walk a different route, you know, change your routine up in a sort of way, like, I think that will open up new things and and help you to, yeah, just live a fuller life, I guess. That's amazing advice. Thank you very much for joining us and thanks for sharing your ideas. No problem. Take care, Nassar. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thanks everyone for listening to yet another episode of the Career Metas podcast. I have written a brief summary of the interview with also the resources that Gorat has shared. You can find that in the show notes. If you enjoyed this episode and also learned something new, Feel free to post a comment or review. And if you really loved it, go ahead and share this amongst your network. Until next time, this is your host, Nisar Ahmad. Thank you.